Hello class of VML 3500. This is our project one. Our topic is hybrid cars. Our group members consist of Daniela Bernal, Jose Herrera, and myself, Mateo Restrepo. The reason we chose this project was because we needed to find uh, more economical and environmentally safe alternatives to our current personal transportation systems. At the same time, we, maintaining, we want to maintain the standard performance and still retain the reliability factor of our cars. So first we had to divide our responsibilities. Daniela had to do the report editing. She also researched the electric car, which be became part of the series and parallel systems. Jose had to do the hydraulic and gas hybrid system with the regenerative braking. And I had to do the history of the first electric and gas uh, system, also with the air and gas system. I also had to do the compiling of the PowerPoint presentation. So now to begin, what is a hybrid car? Well, the hybrid car is a system that utilizes more than one form of energy for propulsion. In this case, now we have different types of cars. The hybrid cars uh, are electric with combustion, so with gas, and they, be, they perform in series or in parallel. Now we have the air uh, and combustion, which is compressed air. And we have the hydraulic and combustion, which also works as a series or in parallel. So the history, the history of our hybrid electric cars first started with uh, Dr. Ferdinand Porsche, which he developed his first hybrid car in 1900. This car consisted of two front wheel drive battery powered wheel hub motors, which were each linked to an electric generator that were powered by a combustion engine. Now, as you can see in this picture, this is an actual replica of the first hybrid car that was ever made, which was replicated by Porsche uh, uh, Museum. In this slide, we see that we have the first hybrid air car. Now, it is debated who was the first creator of these cars, but what it is known is that they were based off the Mikarski engine, which were made for um, locomotive en engines. Now the Tata Motors in industry, uh, they introduced an MDI CityCat, which is their air car. And this car uh, can reach speeds of 100 miles per hour and has a range of 125 miles. Next, we have Jose speaking about the hydraulic and combustion system. Hello everybody. So the first hydraulic um, hybrid vehicle was built in the year 2000 by the United States Environment Protection Agency. Um, it was built as an alternative hybrid since electric were coming out. They wanted to find other sources as well <clears throat> that can represent hybrid vehicles. It consisted of a hydric, um, hydraulic energy storage system and used a 1.9 liter diesel engine. Um, the prototype was very successful in achieving 80 miles per gallon in combined seating highway. Um, <clears throat> so here we're going to talk about hy um, hydraulic systems. The systems can be subcategorized to both series and parallel, which will be talked later in the PowerPoint. Um, but this image practically shows the key components of a hydraulic system that works for both parallel and series. We first start with the engine pump and motor which practically are used to start, the, to start the engine and generate pressure. We then, we then go to the, high, um, to the high pressure accumulator. This accumulator stores the high pressure hydraulic fluid and it's used <clears throat> by the pump motor to, move the, to propel the vehicle. Then we have the low pressure reservoir which stores the, the low pressure hydraulic fluid after it was used by the pump. And lastly, we have the drive the drive motor which moves them, um, that is used while the vehicle is currently moving. And then here we have um, Daniela to talk about electrical hybrid cars. Hello everyone, I'm going to be talking about the arrangements of different hybrid cars. To start off, we're going to start off with the series hybrid, which has an internal combustion engine that drives a generator, which powers an electric motor that turns the car's wheels. Some advantages to this system are that it's best during stop and go traffic or city driving. The vehicle computer powers the motor by the only battery pack, which saves on engine size. In addition, the engine can be smaller due to less demanding power needs. 
Two disadvantages to this system are as follows. The battery pack must be more powerful to compensate for the power the engine cannot provide. In addition, the battery and generator make this arrangement much more expensive than the next one we'll discuss. The second one we're discussing is a parallel hybrid, in which the internal combustion engine and electric motor work together to provide power to the wheels. Some advantages to this system are that it uses a smaller battery pack, and it relies on regenerative braking to recharge it. Regenerative braking is when you change the kinetic energy from the wheels into potential energy to charge the battery. In addition, the engine can act as a generator for the battery as well. A disadvantage to the system is that it's inefficient in converting mechanical power to electricity when driving on a highway. Next, we're going to talk about some improvements that we can make to hybrid systems, beginning with the battery. Batteries in hybrid cars tend to be inefficient because they overheat. Overheating of a battery decreases its life and its charging and discharging capacity. From research, we can see that the cabin air refrigeration system is insufficient to cool the battery. Therefore, there have been some developments in liquid thermal management systems, which we have found that are more efficient than water and air cooling systems because of their higher heat capacity and thermal conductivity. Next, we're going to talk about how we can improve the regenerative braking system by Jose. So the regenerative braking system is a method of braking in which energy is extracted from brakes and is stored and reused. We have two different concepts that we came up with which um, are as follows. We have the hydraulic ABS system. Uh, practically what this does is we combine the, um, the ABS system with the hydraulic regenerative braking system. This this would lower the, the complexity of the whole system and also save space. In the long run, it will decrease the production cost if manufactured. We also have the supercapacitor regenerative braking system. Um, this system practically, um, energy is converted to electricity by an alternator and instead of being directly transferred to the battery, it is transferred to a supercapacitor. The capacitor is able to accept and release more electricity um, and is able to charge quicker between the two concepts. It also <clears throat> will increase better, it will have a better fuel economy of about 10% for the vehicles that we're currently using it. And now we have current hybrid cars by Mattel. So in our roads, we've seen a lot of hybrid vehicles that are being introduced to our society. And uh, as you can see, we have the Toyota Prius, which is a very common car. This car is an electric and gasoline car. Its miles per gallon are 51 in the city and 48 in the highway. Now, we, BMW also introduced their car, their i3, which was introduced in 2014. And this car also uh, works in the electric, with electric and gasoline system. Their miles per gallon are actually very high. It's 137 in the city and 111 on highway, so it's very impressive. And we have a UPS truck, which actually varies a little bit because this car actually works with the hydraulic and diesel system. And they have improved rates of 60 to 70% fuel economy, which is in this case saving the company a lot of money. Now for our future hybrid cars, we have the 2016 Acura NSX. This car was shown in the Michigan um, Car Auto Show. And this car is an electric with gasoline. It's uh, a sports hybrid car. It's an all-wheel drive car, so it's going to be very, very fast. It has uh, 550 horsepower and a lot of other good features. The 2016 uh, Toyota FT1 is an electric gasoline car. It's a 2.0 liter turbocharged with two electric motors. And this is still being questioned, but it is very, very likely. Now, for our conclusion, we have Daniela. To conclude, the, conclude this presentation, I wanted to make a comment about how more automotive companies are researching and investing into hybrid technology due to the strict gas emission regulations coming out from the government. Because hybrid cars are relatively new when compared to their internal combustion engine counterparts, there are still many areas of development that have yet to be researched. Further improvements include design concepts such as regenerative braking and improved battery performance, as we discussed earlier. Thank you for watching this presentation.